Hello guys, in this video we're going to cover how to connect OpenPLC with Factory I.O. We're going to need three softwares, the OpenPLC Editor, the OpenPLC Runtime and Factory I.O. So first up, we're going to install the software. So you go to the OpenPLC project, then you click on Getting Started, and then you click on the Editor. So here you can see a print screen of the software, of the Editor. And the big advantage is that the programs are written according to the EEC 61131-3 standard. So what does that mean? This standard is used in all major brands of PLCs and it will make that all the function blocks that we will use and languages are according to that standard. So if you can write code in OpenPLC you also can write code in an Allen Bradley PLC or a Schneider PLC or a Siemens PLC. So you click on this icon to start the download. You download it, unzip it, and double click on the Open PLC Editor shortcut. Uh, please make sure your uh, antivirus is disabled, otherwise you're gonna have a good, bad time. Just download it, unzip it, install it, and then we go to Factory IO website, so factoryio.com. And we will use uh, this software because it's free and you can simulate all kinds of uh, projects in it without any hardware. So it's completely free and uh, you don't have to give credit card information. The 30 day free trial is uh, very nice to try out. So you click on try to free, you fill in your um, personal data and you start the trial install it and then we'll have the software. So the OpenPLC runtime will be uh, included in the OpenPLC editor. So if you install it, you will also have the OpenPLC runtime. So in short, this software we will write the code in. In the OpenPLC runtime, um, this will run on your PC and will connect with the software factory IO so we can um, make a project. We will use an example to show you how to connect OpenPLC runtime with Factory IO. So you open Factory IO, wait a little bit, and then we're going to open a predefined scene. So you have here scenes, and these are components uh, put together for you so you can uh, program, you can focus on programming it. So this is scene one from A to B. Transport the box until it reaches a sensor. This is a very basic one. You click on it, it will open. And normally you can see uh, this is a conveyor. Here you can also see conveyor as an actuator and a sensor. Uh, you will see the sensor is yellow because it's uh, now it's one. If you don't see these tags, here above you have, uh, you have to turn them on or off. So turn them on so you can see them. You will see this is white and this is yellow. This is yellow because it's a photoelectric sensor and if it sees the reflector it's a one so it's on. This is important to program your uh, logic. So if the sensor uh, sees the reflector it's one, if something is in between like a box it's zero. So if we now press play in the simulation nothing will happen. This is because we have no logic to control conveyor. The logic we're going to use is OpenPLC, but first I'll just give a small demo with uh, the logic you can use included in Factory I.O. So you go to File and then you have this uh, named Drivers. Drivers are the connections, so the controller logic uh, you want to use to control the conveyor and uh, to control the scene. So you press Drivers None is selected, and just to demonstrate, we're going to use Control.io. Control.io is a software included in Factory.io, and it's a very, very, very basic uh, software to program. So we have uh, Control.io, and we can start using logic here. So we have a conveyor and a sensor. This will be included in text, tax. We use the sensor. And if the sensor is 1, the conveyor should run. And if the sensor is 0, the conveyor should stop. So 
it's very easy this uh, exercise you will see that it will work so why wouldn't you use control io to learn about automation software the main disadvantage is it's not according to the standard so you have only one la language that's inspired by a function block uh, diagrams but it's not the standard uh, you cannot also use many features you can use in open plc and the function blocks aren't uh, according to standard either so you can use control io and learn some logic and some logic controlling but i wouldn't use it if you want to learn about actual plc's and want to make the step later to plc so we're going to close this we don't going to save it if you want to program this with open plc first you have to write your program so that's the first thing we're going to do we're going to remember we have one input and one output that's important to remember the input is a sensor it's one when it sees the reflector and zero just like now when it sees the box so we're going to close factory io uh, so now that we know what we have to program we open it open plc editor to make the program and then it opens first you have to make a new uh, project you type in new and then you have to make a new uh, folder so open plc saves in folders so it has to be an empty folder scene a so you have to select an empty folder. If you select the full one, it will uh, will not work. So we're gonna do that again. New, and we will save it in the new folder I just made. Select folder. We have to create a first program interface. So I will call this my main program, and pou type is program. And the language I will use in this project is the function block diagram of, or FBD. Maybe we will dive in uh, other languages in, a, in an upcoming video. So you press OK. And then you have here your program area. Here the library with uh, blocks. And here we can program or program. So it's a very easy program the first scene so just connecting the variable sensor to the output it's easy to showcase how to connect to factory io so you press the plus button to add a variable it's a local variable it's not an input or output because the local variable is written to factory io so you give this a name it's uh, I find it good practice to, if it's an input, to start with input underscore and then a variable name. And I will make two, also one, an output. The reason why they use Q and not O is because a Q cannot be mistaken with a zero. Uh, mistakes were made in the beginning of PLC programming and they decided to use Q for output, for the O. So that's the logic there. So Q conveyor as an output. So the type, I will uh, do a video about um, types later, but the first type you're going to use is a base type and it's bool and it's either one or zero. So if you know bina binary logic, it's on or off. Um, for the sensor, that means it's one when the sensor is uh, not detecting anything because it sees the reflector and a zero when it's detecting a box. If the conveyor is zero is it when you not want to turn it on and one if it has to turn on. So we choose data type bool. The location, so this is something you just have to assume. The location is a percentage EX 100.0 so it's a bit that's why it's 0 0.0 and it starts at address 100 uh, for slave devices in open plc so 
for the output also QX 100.0 because it's our bits and I forgot the percentage. Um, you can set an initial value when the PLC starts up. We're not going to do that. Uh, options, I will leave that for now also. And you can add some uh, comments. Uh, sensor to detect the box. So when we, when we have that, we just have to connect them. So you can drag and drop the inputs, so E sensor, and then you can drag the Q sensor. You will see the arrow, it's it's like an input, just a little leg on the right side. You want to have a little leg on the left side to be it to be an output. So you press on it, you double click on it, and here you can um, say that it's an output class. And you press OK. The connection is very easy, you just connect them. <laughs> and then you can simulate it, but that's not really yeah, we will do it now. So start PLC simulation. Then you have to press on these glasses here with uh, instance. And if you see a debug instance and you can click the variables you want to monitor. So I monitor sensor and I want monitor conveyor. You can also force the value, toggle value, and then will it be true? Because the sensor is true, the conveyor also will be true. For a simple program like this, this is not really necessary. If you want to stop it, you stop PLC simulation. So now we have our program. And we have to generate program for open PLC runtime. That's the arrow key here. Press it. And then it starts to compile. Uh, I save the code um, in the same file as the project. It's not necessary, but I find it easy to find the file back. So I save the program. Now we have the program. Um, you can even stop this if you want to. So you can close it if you want to or leave it open. It doesn't matter. So now we're going to start the open PLC runtime. This window will pop up. If everything is okay, uh, you will get this. And it says also running on um, this website. So we'll open it now. I will put a link on the screen. Uh, I made a, a link to it, so it's easy for me to open every time. And this is the web address you need to go. Um, the credentials are OpenPLC and I also think the password is OpenPLC. So we have a dummy empty program. So we're going to put in our own program. So you need to choose a file. Uh, it's in Dutch for me. I don't know why. And then you go to the map where you saved your PLC project and you're gonna load the SD file and you click on upload program and you, will s you have to give some information so I'm gonna call this scene A for YouTube you can add some comments and then you upload the program it will compile the program So we wait a little bit, it's generating the VARs, and you can also see these are the VAR names uh, we used, EX100 and QX100. Still compiling, compilation finished successfully, so go to dashboard. So the program is running, uh, we can start the PLC, but we didn't make the connection yet to uh, Factory IO. So how do we do this? We will open Factory IO also. We open scene 
one again. Then we go to file, drivers, and then you're gonna select Modbus TCP IP server. So not a client but a server. Then you go to configuration and configuration and make sure the port here is 502. You can also write this address down. You're gonna need it. To set the IO points, uh, we have in this instance one digital input, one digital output. So you can set it to one if you want, but we will set it on four, so we can use it for other projects also. And then we have registry, registry, register inputs, and those are normally used for analog inputs. And register outputs, and that are analog outputs in the PLC world. So we set that to this slave ID, we set to one, and you choose your network adapter. Then you go back and you will see uh, it like this. So it will s s connect to this device. Now we go to factory I.O. and we set our uh, settings the same as this client. We will add a new device and here you can see slave devices are attached to address 100 onwards. So it will start with address 100.0. So add a new device. Then the device type is a Modbus TCP device. Slave ID is 1, like set in factory I.O. Then the AP IP address, uh, we have to look again. You tap it over, the port is 502, and then the Start address we will use 0, so it starts on 100.0 and to 4, so it stops with 100.3 because the 0 also counts. Same with the outputs and also with this input register and holding register and write register. And then we give it a name, so factory IO, I'll call this. And you go down and save the device. Uh, I forgot. Uh, forgot the starting address. So you fill it in like this, and then you save the device. Okay. Now it's saved. So this is the device uh, it will be connected to. And then we start the PLC. So now it's running, and it will search for the client. Um, it's running this program, scene A, from YouTube. You can also monitor your inputs. So, sensor is high and conveyor is high. So, uh, it's also good. So, now we go to factory I.O. So, you will see sensor input 0 is high and coil is also high. Now we press play on the simulation and you will see that it will run. And it stops when the conveyor is at the end. So now we can make programs in OpenPLC with a real OpenPLC software package that's free and confirming to the standards. And we can test out our programs that we make on factory IO. So we covered a lot today, uh, how to download Factory I.O. and OpenPLC and how to connect them using uh, scene 1 of Factory I.O. as an example. In the next coming videos I will make um, other scenes work with OpenPLC and will explain a little bit how OpenPLC works and PLC uh, languages in general. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure to subscribe and I will see you next time.